Hi, I'm Johanna Hanink, and I'm delighted to be taking part in the Actors of Dionysus' Daily Dose. I'm going to be reading an excerpt from The Gorgon, a story by Andreas Kirkovitsas. The story was written in 1895, but it draws on an old Greek folk tradition, which told of how the Gorgon, who was the sister of Alexander the Great, would roam the seas asking sailors whether her brother was still alive. So here we go. Suddenly, the awe-inspiring form of an utterly gorgeous girl is standing before me. She was wearing a diamond-encrusted crown on her head, and her rich azure hair fell about her sides and locks that cascaded all the way down into the waves. Her broad forehead, almond-shaped eyes, and coral lips radiated a gleam of immortality and a regal dignity. A solid gold, scaly cuirass extended down from beneath her throat and gripped her body. In her left hand, she held a shield, and in her right, she wielded a Macedonian sarissa. I hadn't yet recovered from my astonishment when I heard a sweet, calm, and gentle voice say to me, Sailor, my fine sailor, does King Alexander live? King Alexander, I whispered. How could King Alexander be alive? I was wondering what kind of question this was and how I should respond when the voice said again for a second time, Sailor, my fine sailor, does King Alexander live? Now, my lady, I answered without thinking, King Alexander, now, even his dust is gone from the earth. Alas, what I suffered next, the utterly gorgeous girl at once transformed into a frightful monstrosity. She emerged from the waves in the form of a cyclops, revealing half her scaly body. Here and there, live snakes shot from her hair. They flashed their tongues in venomous fangs and blew forth a frightful gale of wind. Only now did I realize just who I was dealing with. It was the Gorgon, the sister of Alexander, who had stole the immortal water and continued to wander, alive and all-powerful. Of course she wasn't asking after his mortal body, but about the world's memory of her lord. And now, infuriated by my foolish answer, she slammed her hands, a heavy hand with a forest of hair, onto the gunwale, thrashed her tail left and right, and turned gentle sea to ocean. No, lady, I lied, I shouted loudly, my knees turning to jelly. She looked at me severely, and with a quavering voice, asked once again, Sailor, my fine sailor, does King Alexander live? He lives and reigns, I replied at once. He lives and reigns, and all the world is his domain.